Hello, and this video is just going to be a short video, and we're just going to try out the Disco Diffusion 5.3 update that now has symmetry options. And where we can find these new settings is under settings, if we expand that, and then we go down to extra settings and expand this, and they will be on the very bottom part here under transformation settings. And here we have use vertical symmetry and horizontal symmetry. And we're going to go ahead and first just do a run without it so that we can compare it. And I've got my prompt here, Digital Art of Steampunk Buildings by Justin Gerard and Jason Edmiston, Sci-Fi Art Training on Art Station. And let's go ahead and run it. Okay, and our render is winding down here. And you see we've got a nice couple of sets of buildings here. And then we're, what we're going to do first is we're going to turn on the horizontal symmetry and see what we got. Okay, so we're going to go back up here, turn on the, let's do the horizontal symmetry first. This should echo the left side and the right side. Okay, we run that. Now let's go ahead and keep our prompt the same and do another run. Okay, and our run is starting to wrap up now. And I think I like this feature. If you notice, it's not exactly, it doesn't exactly mimic the left and right side, but it definitely provides some symmetry to the image you generate. And see, so it kind of copies these things here in the middle. And yeah, so that's that's the horizontal symmetry. And the next one we'll try is the vertical symmetry. Okay, and our image is kind of winding down here. And you see it kind of mimics the top from the bottom, but not exactly. So my initial thought was maybe this would be good to like do a reflection. But I think to do a reflection, I think I just cut the image in half, flip it, you know, and do it in a photo editor or something like that, and then add ripple effects. But this might have some uses as well. I don't like this quite as much as the other setting, but I guess it also just depends on what you're doing. If you're just doing something abstract, you know, this might be a good setting. Or like with this one, maybe we could like paint some clouds in here to kind of make it look, you know, like they're cities flying in the sky. But I definitely do like these settings. I think these are going to add some more options to a program that already has lots and lots of ways to micromanage it. So I, I do like these new features. And the next one we'll have to do is course is with both of them on. We'll see what that looks like. Now, another thing too, I didn't pay attention to is the render time. So I'll do one more after this and see if this is adding anything to our render time or if it makes any change at all. So let's go ahead and run it now with all, with both of them on. So this should probably, I'm anticipating kind of a kaleidoscope effect, you know, something a bit more abstract. Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, and you can see here, the image is kind of what I expected. It's kind of abstract, you know, it has mirrors on horizontal and vertical. So you're going to get something kind of abstract with this. So this might be good for videos, actually. But I'm going to do one final render here just to see if this does add to the render time. Okay, and as the final render is winding up here, I am glad to report that it doesn't seem like it affected the rendering time at all to me. So it looks like that is good to go. You can turn that on and it won't affect your rendering time if you want to use it. I've just kind of shown you what it does. And stay tuned. I do have several tutorials in the works right now. Some of them are going to venture out of Disco Diffusion just a little bit, like some post editing. And I also have a really important one I'm going to show you on how to make videos like the one I recently posted. And that will involve several programs, and but that is coming very soon. So thank you for watching. And I have provided a link below to the update for this version of Disco Diffusion 5.3.